Hello, and welcome to Reddit Rewind, where we cover Reddit's most ridiculous stories. So today we have a pro-revenge story about a guy who gets revenge on a woman who lets her dog do his business on the airport floor. A woman let her dog poop on the airport floor, so I poop on her plans. While walking to my gate at LAX, I noticed a woman whose dog was in the middle of doing its business. The woman was loudly facetiming with her back to the dog, so I assumed she didn't notice. That was likely the thought shared by a gentleman who tried to get her attention. Uh, I excuse me, miss, he said in a polite tone. The woman glared at him. Your, your dog, he sheepishly continued, pointing at the mid-poop pup. The woman rolled her eyes and went back to FaceTime as the man slinked away, seemingly embarrassed. Some people, she bellowed to her FaceTime companion with no hint of irony, are just so damned rude. When her dog finished, the woman started walking away, leaving everything right on the airport floor. Another woman tried to stop her. You're not going to clean that up? She asked as shocked as the rest of us were. They have people for that? The offender replied, disappearing into the crowd, as much as someone yelling into their phone can disappear into a crowd. I stood near the pile and warned people to walk around it while someone else got a maintenance worker's attention. No one said anything. We were all so shocked that anyone could be that horrible. When I got to my gate, the woman was there too. Great, we were both going to Tokyo. When I travel abroad, I get embarrassed by Americans doing things 100 times less embarrassing than leaving animal feces on the floor of an airport. To make it worse, her dog was now barking at everyone who walked by. I have nothing against people flying with their dogs. I do it often, but it's a privilege I take seriously. My dog is well-trained and behaves better than most people. He certainly behaves better than that a-hole. Speaking of a-holes, there is a pet relief area inside LAX, past security, just two gates away from where the party pooper let her dog go to town. It didn't matter. She was the type of person to litter three feet from an empty garbage can. While her dog barked at the world, the woman had moved from FaceTiming with no headphones to listening to music with no headphones. I don't like to throw the word sociopath around, but I don't know how else I could explain how selfish and terrible of a person she was. I'd bet her car was somewhere in long-term parking, parked across three spots with paint on the bumper from the child's bike she hit without leaving a note. Everyone else tried to ignore her, sitting as far away from her as they could. I am not everyone else. I sat down right next to that horrible woman. Are you going to London on business, I said? I'm going to Tokyo, she responded gruffly, annoyed that I'd interrupted her DJing. Oh, I said, then you better hurry. The flight got moved to 53C. This is the flight to London. I figured I could give her a little moment of panic as payback for how terribly she was treating everyone. I didn't predict what would happen next. She grabbed her bags and her dog in a huff and stormed out of the gate without even checking. She was so self-involved she didn't notice that the monitor at our gate still said Tokyo and everyone else at the gate was Japanese. Based on her actions, she believed me that the flight had been moved, so she's also an a-hole for not thanking me. Some people, I thought as I watched her rush away from the gate without stopping her, are so damned rude. The flight to Tokyo was at gate 69A, so the 53 gates were on the other side of the next terminal. And I felt guilty knowing she probably berated some poor clerk who had to explain to her that there was no gate 53C. I don't know if she made it back to this flight before we took off or not, but I didn't see her board and I don't hear her dog. Her missing her flight was not originally my intention, but it would be a fine punishment for her being so rude to everyone and making a low paid stranger clean feces off the floor. What makes me wonder if I went too far is the knowledge that Delta only has one flight to Tokyo each day. Whoops, maybe she can rebook for another airline. I hear they have people for that. Edit. For those who want to play internet detective and demand to see my ticket, as if that even proves anything, I'm a stand-up comedian with a show in LA last night and a show in Tokyo tonight. But if that's not enough for you, here's my ticket. And yes, Delta does allow dogs on flights to Japan. Edit 2. RIP inbox in a ridiculous thousand message way. Thanks to all the nice folks, especially the people who are coming to shows, etc. I'm trying to get to all your comments, but it may take me a few days.
For those who are being jerks, I hope you wheel your suitcase into her dog poop. Talk about an entertaining pro-revenge story. Now, when I was looking through the comments section, a lot of the posts were having a lot of doubt on whether or not this story was true or not. Um, regardless of whether or not it was true, I personally found it was extremely entertaining, and I found this comment here to kind of sum my thoughts up of what I thought of the story. While people debate whether this happened or not, i just like to tell you I appreciate how well written it was. Good rhythm, great selection of details, wonderful phrasing referencing other parts of the story, clear, entertaining writing. What else could I ask for? Yeah, and when it comes to the entertainment side of the story, I couldn't ask for anything more. Well written, funny story, great description, short, sweet, to the point, and uh, yeah, I definitely laughed. So guys, what do you think of it? Leave your comments down below. So here we have a vacation-themed short and sweet pro-revenge story titled, Cheat on Me and No One Goes on Vacation. My ex and I used to go to a Cancun resort every year with a bunch of our mutual friends. I found out my ex was cheating on me when I accidentally got a flight confirmation email that he booked tickets for himself and the other girl. It was rough. Tried to have a civil breakup, but he refused to pay me for the Cancun vacation that I had already prepaid. I tried to get my money back, but he refused. After our breakup, it took several weeks to find a new place to live and move my things out of his house. On the last trip to the house, I asked him one last time for the money, and he again refused. So, I accidentally packed his current passport in my last box of things and left my expired passport in its place. Since he already booked the tickets, he apparently didn't check the passport until he was at the airport and was denied the international flight because he didn't have a current passport. I never did get my money, but I did get immense satisfaction that he didn't get to go on vacation. Updated. I gave the passport back a couple of weeks later when I discovered it in a box of things to unpack. So weird, right? He asked me for a refund for the flights, and I told him I would be happy to if he refunded me the resort, which was much more expensive. He declined. So yeah, guys and girls, don't cheat and uh, don't break up with your ex right before a vacation because it'll come back to bite you in the ass. Never doubt the lengths a partner will go once they are spurned. And if you do break up with someone, uh, at least try to be civil about it. He was the one cheating. I think he should have refunded her. But again, we don't know the whole story. Hey, karma bit him in the butt. He shouldn't have cheated. So when I was looking through the comments section, I found two posts that gave advice on how she should have given back the passports after the fact to kind of, you know, to kind of rub it in after the fact. Mail his passport back to him once it has expired. Include a note, hey, funny thing. I got our passports mixed up when I left. Here you go. And the second comment was, Nah, just let him wonder how it happened. Wonder whether it was you or whether he messed up is better. Sending the passports gives him closure. So guys, how would you handle it? Would you give it back a couple weeks later and say, oops, or not do it at all and let him wonder the whole time, not giving him the satisfaction of that closure? Anyways, that's it for today's Reddit Rewind. I hope you enjoyed it. Please comment down below and like and subscribe. See you guys later. Till next time.